Welcome to the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Ryan Van Fleet. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So we're coming up on Labor Day weekend. So I hope everybody is going to enjoy the last holiday of the summer. And it sounds like most of the kids are starting to get back to school and schools are slowly reopening, which I think is great. So this weekend, my I've got some family coming into town, so I'm going to enjoy my time with my my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law and my little nieces. So we'll, we're going to have a fun time hanging out with them and all that good stuff. So I haven't seen them in a while, so it'll be good to catch up and and all that good stuff with family members. So so I will not be fishing um, the Labor Day weekend into next week. So I was supposed to fish today and tomorrow but we went ahead and did some rescheduling because the wind's up enough down here to just to make it snotty when i have clients that can reschedule that are from south florida then then we just go ahead and do it i think too many guys try to push it and they it just it's not fun so when i do have clients that are in south florida i i do my best to look ahead and we look at uh, at my schedule and then we do some rescheduling and then I just move them in to another spot. So I don't like to pressure people and I don't like to push the weather. And I've talked about this in several podcasts, but I'm very firm on that. So, and I've actually done some changes in my policies as well as, as if you're going to book with me, these are the things that you need to be aware of as far as how things go with me. So just so you guys know, and all my policy changes are on my website, so I recommend that you check them out. And my website is www.goodkarmasportfishing.com. There's lots of information on the website about charter fishing with me and all that other good stuff. So it's going to be windy this weekend. We're going to have a, a lots of big crowds. This is kind of like the last hurrah. So fishing right now. Uh, outside the reef this weekend looks like it's going to be a bit bumpy it does look like it's going to calm down a bit so with that being said if you haven't downloaded my app yet it's that way you can take a look at the alligator reef light 24-hour wind report it's very accurate so you can just download the app and the itunes store and the google play store and again the app is the good karma sport fishing app and you just go to uh, the reef weather, and then you can pick out your favorite reef. Uh, molasses reef buoy is still down, but the, the actual forecast on the app is very accurate, but not the, the like I said, the buoy itself is down. It's a NOAA buoy, so they have a, that hasn't been fixed in a couple of years. So who knows when that's going to come back online. But when it does, I'll make it live. But the alligator reef, reef light weather is is live and very accurate i have a 24-hour forecast on there and then there's another module that you can tag into to get more details on the on there as well as i put the noaa report on there for offshore meaning that when i say offshore it's mostly it's the, as far as the offshore fishing uh weather report down here it's the noaa report and it's very accurate as far as what it's doing outside the reef so but the way that the supermoon is and the tides and what I seen when I was offshore on, what day was it? On Tuesday, uh, the currents are, are very strong out in the, in the deeper waters. So with the, with the supermoon, so it's, it's moving pretty good when you got an easterly move it against the, the tide that's coming from the North, it, it kicks it up pretty good. It turns it into a washing machine. So my advice to the guys that are bringing their boats down this weekend is, to you know pop around in on the patch reefs that these are the smaller boat guys you know the 23s and below if you really want to really just go out there and really give it a shot you know three to fives if you can get your anchor set just be careful out there if you do if you're if you're bringing your boats down and you haven't run them in a while guys the the bilge pumps are the most important thing and and setting your anchor in those big seas if you're not like experienced at doing so please don't um, anchor up in shallow make sure everything's checked because labor day weekend last year there was a lot of people that decided to do that and they've like they flipped boats over a oh, one horrific story i do remember was 
there was a, a boat, a family of six people that were fishing off Alligator Light, and they went to retrieve the anchor, and it got, of course, they're using an anchor ball, and then the anchor ball swung around and got caught on their prop, and it flipped the boat over. And they were lucky enough to have a charter boat sitting there next to them, a very large sport fisher, seen, seen everything that happened. And they were lucky enough that that charter boat seen them at the right time and that were able to save those people. So if you're going to anchor out there, please be careful in that stuff, especially if, if you're in a small ride and using an anchor ball retrieval system. Okay. If sometimes I think that you know, people come, you're coming down here and you're like, don't let your ego get the best of you. In other words, be safe. Think about your family members that you're taking out there because I, last year, man, like I said, we, I think we had six boats that flipped and a couple sank and they were mostly guys that, um, Decided that they were going to take the rental boats out to the reef when they're not supposed to. <laughs> so, I mean, the rental boat guys, you know, the rental boat owner, especially the one I know, Vic, man, he's very adamant on guys not taking those boats out to the reef when it's a three to five footers because they don't have anchor ball retrieval systems. And, you know, the there's some really good rental boat places down here, and there's some really like ones that are kind of slim shady, I guess you could say. But, all I can say is that if you are going out there, you better have your stuff checked and be aware because the Coast Guard, they're there for a reason, but you try not to call them because your boat's sinking for something that you could have prevented. So just be very careful because it is going to be a little turned up down here, okay? So like I said, your best bet right now is if you're coming down this weekend and it's kicked up, Three to fives is to get as close to the reef, like 40 to 50 foot. You still have a – with the easterly, there's a good chance that there's some some fish that are pushed in to the reef chasing bait. So you, you still got a good shot at some uh, at some black groupers in there, 30, 40, 50 foot. Uh, even 50 foot gets turned up. you got to remember that easterly slamming against the reef, and that's our beach. So you'll get some, you'll get some nice big um, waves or swells in there. But you can, you know, fish inside the reef, hit those patries. If, if the water's kind of churned up in there, there will be some mutton snappers in there that could be legal size. There's a lot of that stuff in there. And I talked to a buddy, and he says he's catching some nice porgies. So, and so the mangrove snappers are in there. You can do that at night or in the evening hours because they'll, they'll be more active. So just something to do. Or just go lobster fishing. I mean, that's another option for you guys. Now... The Channel 2 bridge is a nice bridge to fish, so that might be another option for you guys to do that is to fish Channel 2 and and then um, Channel 2 and Channel 5 and down to the Long Key Bridge down there. Those are all great bridges to, to target and fish and anchor, anchor up. Now with the weekend, it may be a little busy, so if you are going to do that, you need to go really early in the morning or kind of wait till it clears out, but most people... Even in the evenings, those bridges are really busy. So, like I said, you, know, you just got to pick your battles of what you want to do, but there are things that you can do down here if you still want to go out and have a good time. The Gulf is another option, but you really got to have some good numbers out there, guys, to fish the Gulf. So, the the trick out in the Gulf is to find those sandy spots, those big holes. So, and that's something I'll talk about here in the future. I don't do much of that stuff, but... You can do that. Now, the, the channels in the Gulf are another great place to target mangrove snapper, snappers, the deeper channels. Now, if you're going to go back and fish in those channels, you got to have a park pass. And like I said, the, the FWC is going to be out in full this weekend, and you're going to have all that kind of stuff out there. So that's some, just something for you guys to think about. Fish along the edges of the park and the channels, looking for... Um, those deeper the deeper channel ledges you can find those big mangrove snappers and stuff in the evenings another good thing if you have good tide you need to catch tarpon and sharks and all sorts of goliath groupers all sorts of stuff so just lots of things you can do when it's windy down here in a smaller boat now the bigger boats they'll you know you're, they're, they're going to get out there anyways you know so i would say just you know just use your caution have a good weekend out down here so that's really what I know. Now, as far as if you do decide to get outside the reef, the um, 
you know, you'll want to um, check out my app fishing report. It's very accurate. I'm like it's guys are really loving it. So I'm doing my best to keep up with what's happened as far as accuracy, as far as what, what I'm seeing. And what I'm seeing out there now, what I've seen on this moon is some fantastic bait balls that are moving through. So early in the week, I made a decision to like, I, I changed it up. And usually in September, I change things up a bit. I usually change it up a little bit earlier. So dolphin fishing, but due to COVID and the just the, the sheer amount of boats and the way that the dolphin were moving through this year, I decided not to dolphin fish. I cut it all out and I just waited till the kids went back to school just so things would clear out out there. So, and I did that this week. So I fished with some great guys on Monday and Zach, thank you very much for fishing with me and, and, and you guys, just just an awesome day. We caught we we pitched on bait balls. We caught several nice big blackfin tunas. We caught giant kingfish. And then the next day, based on what I seen, I changed it up. I went to run in my downrigger bait, looking for large tunas. So, uh, like I said, I run a high speed plane off a downrigger, and you can purchase the course to learn how do I do that. Now, one thing too with the courses, guys, and this is another. This is kind of a hodgepodge podcast too. Is as I make changes or make updates, the, then the updates are free with the course, okay? So some of the courses are going to be ongoing. So if you purchase the downrigger course, I'm going to be making some updates to that on how to tweak that a little bit. And just I need some more time on the water to get some more video. And then I'll add that, and then you'll get an update. So when you purchase that course, then you'll get a, an updated video of what I'm doing with that to make things work and how it's – just a little bit more information for you on how to um, run that a little better. So it's a hard thing to do that downrigger and high speed planer, but man, does it kill them! And we killed them. <laughs> we caught. I was a. I hit it just right the other day. I was catching. I caught tunas, giant jumbo tunas, the other day um, on Tuesday. Yeah, I think it was on Tuesday with um, a good client of mine, Gary, and we caught two big ones. And then, then we ran out and went dolphin fishing. And the dolphin had locked jaw, just like I mentioned in my in my fishing report. Man, did they have locked jaw? Oh. And if I didn't have those pilchards, like, I would have been screwed. So the trick is with the pilchards and the moon and the live bait is try to get your bait and everything kind of lined up before the moon phases, man. Pilchards tend to go away. And live bait tends to disappear. So you got to be prepared. If you're going to be a targeting a moon or fishing a moon, you just don't show up in the Keys expecting to find live bait because it's just not how it works in September or anything. I mean, you just can't count on it. So it's just a, it's different than Miami. It's different from up north. It's different. The upper Keys can be really tricky when it comes to that stuff. So just you you just got to get yourself prepared and if you do decide to buy live bait you're not going to be able just to buy two dozen so you got to like you got to make the order worthwhile for the commercial fishing guys that do it especially right now a lot of guys are lobstering and they're getting ready for stone crab season so for them you got to make the live bait order worthwhile you have to like order 20 some dozen or more Sometimes up to 40 dozen, and then you have to have a pen. So there's just a lot more to it. Now, certain places will have live bait down here. So you just got to find the tackle stores that have it, call ahead, and all that good stuff. So you just got to make those plans. Now, as far as the bait that a lot of guys feel that they have to have pilchards, um, it's not necessarily true, especially this time of year. There's a lot of jacks moving through. And I have to tell you, the mutton snappers I caught this week, they were loaded with small jacks. That's what's moving through right now. That's what's bait balling, small baby little jacks. So get those, okay? Match the hatch. They work perfect. They're fast baits. Really small blue runners. They work awesome for mutton snappers this time of year. They're really fast on the bottoms. They're very small. You got to get the small ones, okay? They're very hardy. They live, and they, are, they work very well. Okay, very well. So you got to try to change your mindset a little bit, especially if you can't get a hold of the pilchards, and you got to be creative. So I am working on something special, and I should be done with it today. So you have to wait for the podcast tomorrow 
that involves a dead bait. So you just, I'll make that announcement tomorrow. But like I said, if you're coming down here on a full moon phase, it's a super moon. Bait is really tough. So I would honestly try to get out super early, early in the morning if you really need it and try to catch some fresh live ballyhoo. The, the ballyhoo you can get, but it's a lot of work still. Uh, like the, the Most of the ballyhoo right now, the guys are getting off the elbow up there. But they are they those they are showing up on Conk Reef and Pickles Reef too, and the speedos are actually starting to make an appearance too. But they're there for a very short amount of time, so you gotta have your rod ready, your bait cut, and be. So how I'm catching the speedos is when I am yellowtail fishing or grouper fishing or mutton fishing on the hook. I have a small rod ready. I have all the bait cut, and I'm like thinking positive that those speedos are going to show up. And when they do, everything stops. Lines come out of the water, and all we do are catch speedos. I give my clients back the fishing time. If you have a guy that keeps wanting to put the rod in the water when the speedos are there, and you're the captain, you make him pull that rod out of the out of the water, okay? Because it's to your benefit that you do that, okay? And unless that guy is paying for everything, you're still running that boat, not him. So... My clients, when I when I stop at anchor, I tell them, I give them the heads up of what's going to happen. Okay, I tell them exactly what it's gonna what's going to go on if the speedos show up, and when I tell them, they do exactly what I need them to do. And sure enough, as soon as we get the speedos, we they're like, oh my gosh! And nine times out of ten, we're we're doing very well in on the reef because, in my opinion, that's the absolute best bait, dead bait for the shallow reefs. So Benito works great, but sometimes I fish that stuff side by side and they just won't touch it. Now, just something to think about. So just be prepared this weekend. So that's, and if you can't get out beyond the reef, you'll get another chance and just reschedule your trip. And it is what it is. And I mean, I've been on several vacations and I haven't been able to do what I wanted to do. And I just sucked it up and and just made the most of it. So if you can, if you're coming down and you have a charter that's booked to go uh, out in the front and you can't get out in the front, book a backcountry charter. There's a lot of good guides down here and so many different options to go fishing down here. So you just have to be like open to doing different things if you want to get out on the water. Yeah, you may not be able to get out in the front, but you can go in the backcountry and enjoy something that you've never done. I tell people, if you have not fished the backcountry, you need to knock it off your bucket list, okay? You need to take a ride back to the Everglades. You need to do it. You need to do it at least once in your life because that's where some of the absolute best fishermen started in the Florida Keys. Guys, so I have to wrap this up. I have to do some updates on my autopilot and I have to get my anchor or not my I'm, I'm sorry, I have to get my trolling motor back on the boat today. Uh, what a pain in the ass that's been. Something I'll talk about here in the future. Uh, so before I wrap it up, I want to mention one more thing. If you are a fishing charter business outside of the Upper Keys or down in Key West, you could be anywhere in the United States and you would like to do a fishing report through the Good Karma Sport Fishing app, you can contact me for rates. If you have a fishing product or a or if you're a YouTuber looking to grow your following, you can give me a, um, give me a call for rates as well. So you can get the word out about your channel and all that good stuff and what you're all about. So a good way to grow your following if you're a new uh, YouTuber and all that good stuff or a new charter boat fishing business that is just looking to get started. Uh, like I said, outside of uh, Key Largo or down in Key West, then that's the Keys area. And then if, you, then if you're all the way up to the eastern seaboard, you can be anywhere in the United States. Like I said, anytime you're fishing, it's all good. I have people that listen to this podcast that's global. All throughout the United States, overseas, I can't even begin to, I can't even begin to tell you where, the, where our listeners are coming from. So that's it, guys. Uh, make sure that you follow me on Instagram. I'm going to be putting a post up there today on what I caught on Tuesday. Good way to keep up with what I'm doing daily and all that good stuff and getting news about good karma sport fishing my instagram account is 
Good Karma Sport Fishing underscore FL underscore keys. Download the app, the Good Karma Sport Fishing app, and you can download that through the iTunes Store or Google Play Store. Check out my website, www.goodkarmasportfishing.com, my tackle store, goodkarmafishingtackle.com for all my courses. That's it. Got to go. You guys have an awesome Labor Day weekend. Enjoy it with your friends and family. Chill out. Forget what's going on out there in the world. Do some fishing or just chill. Go swimming. Get on the water. Even if you don't have a boat, just go to the water. It's so peaceful. Uh, give your mind a break from what's happening out there. Guys, and just remember, anytime you're fishing, it's all good. Or anytime you're thinking about fishing, it's even better. Have a good one. Thanks for listening, guys.